Hi, it's Lel from Made by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. And today I'm going to be doing something different. I'm taking part in the Ugly Duckling Challenge. So what is that? It's where lots of other YouTubers get together and take a piece of furniture that is clearly very ugly and they make it lovely. And it's been hosted today by Corey from um, Desert Designs. And if you go to below to our description box, you'll see the link to that. And there's a whole playlist of other YouTubers doing exactly what I'm going to be doing today. So follow along and see what I managed to create. So this is our ugly duckling and uh, I'm going to get Martin to just show you in a minute. It was found, I saw the legs poking out the top of a skip and uh, you'll see when you when you actually see the piece there's a couple of vital parts missing to this it has been a sort of vintage um dresser it, there is a mirror we managed to get that but it's um it's just it's not going to work so um what i'm going to do now is i'm going to hand you over i'm going to film matt and matt's going to tell you quickly what engineering has to do with this piece but we'll show you it first so this is the piece. It has been a vintage dresser at some point in time. The thing that I found this piece in a skip and it was the legs that were sticking up out of the skip and that's what drew me to the piece. And by the time it got pulled out of the skip, I realized somebody had already taken the drawers out of it, uh, but I disliked it. So it came home with us and it sat here for a while. Now today, this is gonna be quite exciting because Martin is going to actually turn this into two bedside cabinets. We're not reinventing the wheel here. My gran did this in the 80s. She took old dressing tables and made them into two. So what Martin, he's going to explain in a minute what he's going to do, but what the piece is generally like is it really needs a good clean. It's been what you would say shabby chic. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. It's been something in the past uh, with a sort of off-white paint. It has been waxed, um, but that wax will have been cured and ready gone by now. I'm not going to strip it. If you watch my channel normally, you know that I'm all about the texture. So it's going to stay, but it will need a really good clean. Um, it's So when the bedside cabinets are separate, I'm going to paint inside and just give that a wee tidy up as well. Put some nice handles on it. I'm going to, to go for an Art Deco feel, something like a boudoir. Um, so that's the kind of look I'm going to put on these two little cabinets when they're cabinets. So I'm going to hand over now to Martin and I'm going to film the lovely Martin telling you what he's going to do. Hello everyone. So this is one of those things that Nell's, Nell gives me some challenges sometimes, I tell you. So I've had a look at this piece and it looks like this centerpiece here is separate from these two. It looks like there are some screws on the inside walls here that attach this centerpiece to this. On the back, there's a single sheet that I'm going to probably have to take off, cut into three to make two back pieces for this. But that's essentially what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this over to the workshop. I'm going to knock this piece out of the middle here, take it all apart. If I have to make a new wall for the inside of this, I will. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it over to the workshop now. And the next time you see this, it will be these two pieces here. Meanwhile, while Martin's over in the shed, I'm going to have a cuppa. Okay, so stage one complete. I managed to get this middle section out of here, and this is what's been left of the side walls. So I've got a fair bit of tidying up to do here, but you know that wall, that wall is solid. So I'll knock all these off, get some sand sanding going on there, clean all this up, and then we'll see where we stand. Um, the back wall was this giant sheet here, so. This is the back of the cabinets. So what I'll do is I'll just get some sheet material and make a new back wall for here. Um, and ah, this one, this one has a shelf midway. This one's missing its shelf. So I will probably take this piece here, cut that to size to make a shelf to go in there. And um, well then it's then it'll be over to Lil. Okay, they've both been separated and they're starting to look a little bit more like bedside cabinets. Martin did exactly what he was said he was going to do. And while there was no back on the piece, I painted it. That's a top tip. If you're ever separating something, it's much easier if you've got, can go from the front and the back as opposed to lean all the way to the back. So we painted the backboard on and Martin then pinned it in. So the same thing has happened 
in both cupboards. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip these bad boys over onto their tops because I'm going to paint the bottom of the legs first. I understand not everybody does this as a business, but I just want to say this. A lot of my furniture goes away on a pallet or is put in the back of a van. And sometimes, no matter how you work it, your, your furniture has to either be upside down or coming out of the van is the wrong way up and you see the bottom of it. Or you get an excited customer that runs out the house to come and meet you at the van to look at the piece that they've just bought and it's upside down. For me, upside down and what's on the bottom is really important. It's maybe the first impressions that they get of their piece of furniture. So I just want to draw your eyes to, to this. This is not is not not worthy of you have to fix this this even though it's upside down and you think nobody's going to see it this you have to fix this the other one's just as bad it just needs as much fixing so all i'm going to do is i'm just going to paint it up it's easier to paint these kind of things upside down anyway because you get this little wheel and you're not crawling around under the ground now in i'm going to be using a mix of guild lane the jubilee range paint today if i can get it open and annie sloan just because i need to add the annie sloan paint to give it loads of texture but i'm going to mix a color now i have to make sure that it'll go it'll do the legs of both so i'm mixing this paint here which is called air force blue gray it's a very dark bluey gray but i want to put a bit of black in it and again this is guild lane black and it's just called jet black the jet black's quite thick, so I'm just going to mix it with a little artist brush to kind of get my colour because I want it quite dark. I still want to have a blue hue to it, but I want it really quite dark. And to me right now, that isn't dark enough. So I'm just going to go and do something really naughty and shove that back in my paint and get another big scoop. Yeah, it's starting to look a wee bit more what I'm looking for. So this is a, an all-in-one paint. So I'm mixing today all in one paints and chalk paints. So at the end, I will have to seal the whole thing. Not mixing them together per se, but I'm just putting them on in layers. So yeah, that's the sort of color I'm looking for. In fact, actually, do you know what? I'm going to be quite bold and I'm going to do another dunk in the black. Yeah. So I'm just going to start. This was a blush I was going to use to put um, some sort of stippling on, but I'm just going to do along here. And this is rough. I mean, this whole piece is rough. So we're going to get a whole load of texture. I don't know whether they had a dog. And it maybe had a wee two at the legs. So all you're going to do while it's upside down is fix all the pieces that a customer, a customer might see. And not just a customer. If you're doing your own piece, you want it to be, you want it to be nice. So I'm going to paint from the top ends of here to here on both um, bedside cabinets and this part here just to get rid of all this now it feels to me like we've been doing this forever but now we're going to get to the good part um, so we know inside is painted and we've done the bottom and I've touched up any bits that I didn't get when it was upside down the bottom is lovely and clean for the customer um, or for yourself it's all done and we've got the dark self sealing paint on the bottom which was the Air Force um, blue grey with a touch of jet black in it. Now we're going to change paints over and mix them together on this top part because we we know it needs a lot of texture for the sides because we've taken away that. So we need to kind of start to add some texture. So I'm going to be using switching between and I'll tell you when I'm switching between them between Annie Sloan and um, Guild Lane Jubilee Range. So. I'm going for a deco feel. So on Etsy, um, you don't have to go for fancy um, decoupage paper. I found a, a woman down south um, from Hampshire who just prints out A4 sheets of nice decoupage paper for £1.99. So I, you get two in a pack. So I got these. So this was my how it came. I had two sheets of this. This lovely lady who I really liked. I knew she was going to be this sort of size, so I was saving her for a project that I knew was quite small. So what I've done so far with this one is I've just ripped it out. Now, it's mulberry paper. It's fibrous. And this is what we're aiming for to get these lovely little fibres, because these are the ones that we're going to be able to. I'll show you better on this one. Can you see all these fibres? All these 
see all this this is the stuff here that is gold dust when it comes to blending now because it's mulberry paper you're going to get an odd piece of that but don't worry just cut that off i've just ripped it all the way around and it's going to go on here now as you know usually i would use lacquer um a finishing top coat to put on my decoupage paper but because this is heavier i'm going to be using some mod podge so we're just going to start and i'm going to be doing the same on both as we go but i'll be working on them as as you know these they kind of um as one dries um i'll work on the the other one that isn't you know what i mean there's two to work on so uh hang on a minute till i put on my broken glasses um there we go so you're just needing a square i think i've kind of gone a little bit bigger than where we need to go but i just want to make sure that there's a really good coat of mod podge all over that so and then we're going to get our lady let's give her a scottish name let's call her morag right morag you're going on here just make sure morag straight i think i think i quite like morag there now because i've diggy -de poke the way around a bit let's just making sure you've got plenty on your edges now what you're going to do is bring your mod podge right to the end and get those fibers all stuck down as i said they're going to be your friend when you when it start when you start to put your top paint up beside it and this is the way to get lovely smooth decoupage paper right more rags on happy and i can see all those nice little fibers now that i've got a little bit moist that i'll be able to now i'm going to be changing an awful lot between paints but my sort of base colour is going to be Annie Sloan's Abusson Blue which is this colour but I am going to be adding a little bit of Giverny which is this colour and possibly a little bit of Oxford Navy now I just want to show you these these are really old cans look at the bottom of that when I I'll show you with this brush when I start to poke in this, look how thick it is. This is what we want for texture to try and fix all the little boo-boos. Now, once I've got my chalk paint on, I'm going to start adding some self-sealing paint, which is um, real blue. Because what I want you to do is when you ever, because you don't, you can pick whatever decoupage paper you want, but look at all your colours, and I've shown you this before. Look at all your, that's why the inside I've painted mustard. Just I didn't, didn't want to do the whole thing gold. So. Um, I have got a yellow here somewhere, somewhere. Can't quite find it at the moment, but I've also got some greens as well. I've got bunting green and British racing green, but again, I have to wait till my chalk paint's all on first. I've put a little bit of tape on this door because that is going to have a wee bit of a magnet on it, but just now to save it flapping open. Now, I'm not going to go in with a great big massive brush. I'm just going to go in with something this size. And as I said, my base is kind of going to be this and it's very thick. So this is what we want. Now don't worry if it's not quite the blend yet. I'm not bothered about that. And you can see I'm stippling it. I'm trying to fix all the messes that the person before. Well, I'm not saying they've made it a mess. I'm just, you know, trying to fix some of the sort of paint and boo-boos. I'm just going to get rid of that there. We can go back and see if we can find it later on so i'm just going to do a little part and i think what i'll do is the bottom actually no i'll do this side because it's going to be sorry martin i'm jumping about i can't quite make up where i want to start actually i think i'm going to start up here because it makes more sense so you can see i'm putting nice thick paint up to my fibrous join And I'm, to be honest with you, the joint's pretty much disappeared already. I'll come back in here with some gold in a minute. This is going to get on my nerves, this banging noise. Try this. Yeah, there we go. So, you get your texture on, get it in this groove here. 
And this is just really our base coat that's going to enable us to kind of like play a little bit with color. This is another way of blending, you know, smooshing. I don't know if that's the technical term, but that's what I'm calling it, smooshing. Right, that should be enough for us to kind of work out where we're going with the color. I'm just going to take it as far as. As here. It's lovely and thick, so it really is going to cover up a, a whole, I've got tape in the inside of here, so I'm not, I'm going to be quite bold. Get it in that join. You can always come back, if you need to brush like a brush, that's fine, but then just come back over and put your texture on top. That's probably enough to, we don't want to work in too big a sections because it will dry. So we'll just say this is the kind of way we're going to start with. Don't mind if a little bit of the original sort of white peeks through here, to be honest with you. And that hinge. Right. Let's call that good for that. Now, let's have a look. So up here, it's getting a little bit dark, but I want to introduce some of this. Even though we've gone to dark here, I still want to have some of this. Right, we had a little bit of a camera malfunction where I was putting two different colours on there. You haven't really missed much. All I've done is put a lighter colour here and here, and I'm starting to be quite serious about the blend. So we can see it's dark and dark here. So what I'm going to do is... And I'm just using a small lattice brush. I'm going to start taking that in and making this. I want this sort of texture that my brush is leaving. I'm going to make this piece really textured. So let's just kind of like carry on to there. And I'm going to do the same on this side here. I haven't got a huge amount of black on my brush, but there's some green here. So I'm going to start moving it out to green. Now, when you're blending, take it right in because then that way it kind of works more. You know, I've taken that colour right into there and right into there. So there we go. Now, this colour here, let's have a wee play because it's got it's not going to all happen instantly, and you're going to have to work at doing some blending. So I've got what I think is not that. And this is going to be too not the right colour. So we'll try this. Mm. Let's have a go, but I think I'm going to need a yellowy, a real yellowy yellow, but see how this works when it's mingled in with the situation that I've got. I might be able to make it work. Or of course I could just the camera and I'll be lazy and go and get the yellow from the shelf behind me but right now let's see if we can make this work. I'm gonna have to go and get the yellow. I'm not I'm not I'm not disliking what this colour but the yellow yellow is gonna make it just a little bit brighter. I'm just gonna stop the camera and just get the yellow. Okay, I've got a yellow, yellow. I'll soon have every colour on my shelf on the floor right now. But this sometimes is the way for blending. You just have to kind of work away, work away, work away. Um, I'm going to have to let this dry a minute. I think it's getting a little bit muddled. So I'll let some of this dry. Um, and I'll come back over because then I'm going to have to now add some yellow, <laughs> add some white to this. <laughs> ah, ha, ha. Right, we're going to let this dry off though because it's obviously it's way too yellow and it's obviously way too wet so but we'll keep that sort of puffy like she's on a puffy actually do you know what maybe yeah, she looks like she's on a puffy cloud there mm. i don't like it that much okay so ignore this part and let's move back up to here just now um 
So I'm dipping in the dark blue for here because it's it's lighter than this over here. It's more dark blue, so let's see what we can do. But it's got some sort of swirly parts. Can you see the swirly parts are sort of lighter blue? But it's kind of go over a little bit the dark. Take it in there. Yeah. Add in a little bit of green here. This is the first of the um colour mine paint. And I want to have this is the thing about them. I mean, you can watch me do this forever in a day, and it would take forever in a day because I keep going back to it. I will sort of paint, get a fine artist brush, and do some of these smooshy sort of parts. I want to go back in here right now and put some more of this up around the top. See, I'm just using a small brush for this. I'm going back in with this one because I want a little bit more of this up the top. It's coming down. And this is where you can get quite inventive. I mean, you don't have to stick to what's in the future. I want more of a blurry line around here. I'm trying to avoid that part there right now. So I'm going to start darkening. I want to start darkening up the edges now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start now kind of introducing the darkest, the um, Oxford Navy up in here because when I get to the next Oxford Navy, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to transition in our black. So, Oxford Navy, and remember if you've got a bit of detail, you can brush first like this to get it into the detail, but then you need to go back over to if you want to keep the texture. Take us right up to the top. Back up around here. I think I'm kind of giving you a rough idea of what I'm doing here. I'm just I just wanted to get it to the point where, you know, it was starting to look, I, need, I think it needs to dry a little bit. So what I think I'll do is I'll start working on the other one and then we'll come back to this one and we'll start figuring out what we're going to do down here with our feathers because what's currently happening down here is not happening for me. So, but I'm liking this. You can do it the opposite way around. I mean, here I'm using the black at the top so it doesn't get too muddled. I'm putting my black in, making sure that I get up and down. And then I'm going to stand up and make sure I get all the edges. So there's my black first. Top's going to be black, so I'm not too concerned about any black. But then you can go into your Oxford Navy up and down to your end your piece. It just depends what you're. You know, Doing it the way I've just did it becomes less muddled, but sometimes I quite like it when it, there's a better sort of kind of transition. Sometimes I don't, it just depends. I'm kind of wanting some of the black because I, I, I want it like it's a kind of frame at the front. Like this is framing it, the dark is the, the black is framing it. I'm going to go on. I'm not. I'm, bit, I'm just going to go in here with some, do some bigger position bits with it. I don't want too much of the light showing here. And I'm going to dip back into here. Oh, that was a dip. I'm going to bring that light up to you. The trick is to make it all work at the end. And if we can make it all work, then I'll be really happy. I'm just going to go on and I'm going to do a little bit more of this until we get, this is dry, I'll work on the other one. 
So I'm kind of getting somewhere, but now I want to try. I just blended with the big splodgy cloudy part away. I've got a small arts brush and I've got the sort of colours that I think I want to mix between in this container. So I'm going to start and I've, I'm using this kind of flat ended um, artist brush. So I'm going to try and start somewhere. So I'm going to try and start from here. Um, and just go between them all just now and see if I can try and make it work a wee bit better. I'm wanting to put some kind of colours in. Oh, so much to go with. So, um, stop there, but I think I need a little bit more. Definitely a little more white. Right, I'm not talking again, I realise I'm concentrating. I've got a really bad habit of when I'm concentrating, I'm like, oh, that's a bit yellow, I'm not talking. So um, if you ever think my mic's not working, it is, it's just I'm just trying to I'm just trying to work something out. It's my own in here, which gives me a creative license other areas. Um See it gets a little bit dark again, so let's just kind of put some black in, in here. If you're working in small areas, just get a little pot and just use it as a sort of palette. Um, then I'll put some yellow back over this. I think probably I'm going to kind of stop sort of here, so I'm just kind of going to go like this, tap that in there just so that it's not as as pronounced and it kind of ends there and I'll go back over there with a little bit of yellow but I think that's that's all I need now the next exciting thing I want to do is on the front actually you know what I think I'm going to do because why not I'm going to try and get some of this blue here I'm going to put some jewels down here she's got Yeah, and I'll do maybe went a bit mad with the jewels there. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll make some of these through here. See what I'm doing? I'm putting this colour in on the decoupage paper. Um so I can make it work elsewhere. And I think that's probably enough because there's one red jewel but I'm not gonna I think I need to work a little bit better here on the transition lines, but I'll do that off camera. You've got a rough idea of where I'm just going with that. Um, this side's pretty much finished, as in all I'm going to do to it until the next part, but it's not it's not dry enough to do the next part because the next part we're actually going to do is we are going to start putting a deco stencil over this, just out to this line here. So we're going to have to do it probably in sections. I've actually got a better stencil, I think, that's a little bit better than this one. This one might be perfect for the sides, but I think for the front, I'm going to go and get another stencil. So I'm going to go away. I'm going to work on the other one just now and get the other one, the other side, to the same speed as this side. And then we'll, we'll do a bit more. This side is dry. So I have here, I'm, I've reverted back to this. I prefer this um, stencil. And I've got some gold gilding acrylic in a pot here so there's one or two ways you can do this you can either apply it with a makeup sponge but I'm going to be using this fluffy brush that I can go circular motions but I just need tiny little bits so I'm just going to show you I'm just taking a tiny little bit and I'm just rubbing it round the reason why I'm using a big pot to keep doing this is because it separates quite easily so it's just to keep it all together now I'm only wanting to try and keep it in these parameters really so I'm gonna and I don't want to go over my lady over Morag so um, I'm gonna line this up and I'm making sure that it's kind of quite secure and I'm gonna go there's plenty of lovely texture under here 
what I'm going to do. And I'm trying to be mindful of what's underneath here. I don't want all of this all the way down near Morag's, to my near Morag's face. Whoops. Don't want that. So I'm going to go here. And there's, that's about as much as I want to do at the top before I move it over. I think um, any more than that, and it's going to kind of detract a little bit from the Morag. Right, so I'm going to move this. And there's a little tiny triangle there which should be, uh, I'm just going to put this back on here a minute, just so I can get this little triangle, I don't know where I'm going, I'll line my two little triangles up, it should mean that it all works out, but I just need to get a little more gold on my brush. And I'm mindful of this is my edge here, so I don't want to go off it. So I'm just going to go down here like this. Like this. And I want to have a suggestion of it. Let's put this back on here a minute while I get my next little. Let's see where I'm going. A little bit more of a dunk in my gold. And I'm being mindful of my edge as well. But here, I can go to town. Because we're well off the... Bit more gold. You can apply your stencil any way you want. Um, I do all different ways, but today I wanted to. <laughs> I've never used the same way twice. It's just because I knew this was quite textured and I wanted to make sure that my brush got down in all of the texture. I want to try and take this up here. Whoop, I don't shift it. And take that up to Morag's jewel there. And under there. And I think I'm going to, where would be my joiny part here? I'm going to have to maybe bring this back up here a minute. Oh, do you know what? I'm just going to wing it down here. Probably wrong. See if I can get... Yeah, I'm just going to do this. Hopefully this will work out. So, I'm pretty pleased with this, but I'm wondering whether I might do this because I don't like the just kind of blankness of it all down the bottom part there. I'm just going to do the same. You can see what I'm doing now. I start off with good intentions but now I'm just doing it like that. And I'm wondering whether I could just do these top edges here as well. Just so it doesn't, my floor on the studio is really wonky so it's wobbling all over the place. Anyway, I might just leave that part because I can't, I don't think I can, hang on, I can do this. There we go. Right, I think we could do with something in here. This is where I go a little bit crazy, isn't it? I'm going to line this back up. Just maybe, just maybe a suggestion of, I've not got much on my brush, just kind of. Gonna do that there. Yes. Now, Morag's looking pretty, pretty good now. Now, as if there wasn't anything else that I could do to this, but of course, there's always something more. In a minute, when this is all dry and everything, I have these gilded florals. It's a redesign by Prima Transfer, and I'm gonna have some florals coming here, and florals coming here. But before we do this, I want to show you the side. Now, I don't know whether Martin needs to stop and get a different camera angle or whether he's quite happy with it there. So, this, this is the rough side. This is the bad side. This is the side that was joined in the middle. 
So plenty, 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 plenty texture all the way around. And if you do this yourself, you'll understand this part here has had to have a lot of work and a lot of sand. And hang on, I just was probably a really funky angle there. I'm just adding that really dark brush in there. I'm just blending that out. Sorry, I've got, I've got really laid there. Um, what I've done is texture, 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 texture. And I've kept this piece in the middle relatively smooth. Um, I'm just hoping it's dry enough for what I want to do. Because now I want to put this here. Um, and I'm just pretty much going to do the same thing. In fact, I'm going to start here because I can blend out. I'm going to be blending out. It's just the suggestion of this gold again. Um, I might have to come back. I'll see how this looks. I think my paint might underneath might be a little bit wet. But we'll, we'll see. And with this one here, because I'm working on relatively wet paint, I can put quite a bit more on my brush. It's not wet, but it's not dry either. Um, so I'm having this on here because I can blend it in. Just It's just to give the sides a little bit of interest. It's, it's you know, you don't have to do this. You can just cover it all in texture, but I figured that the middle wasn't too, part, too bad at all. I just needed to kind of cover this part here. And even though it's been sanded, there's still, you know, and I thought, well, a little bit of something on the sides. Oh, I went a little bit heavy there. Um, will make it um, happy. Or, or maybe it'll make me happier. So, same way, you've just kind of like, I'm just kind of giving a suggestion. Now, this isn't as texturized as the front. So maybe this is the point in time where I should have possibly moved over to a makeup sponge. However, um, but all your textures around the edges because that was where it was the worst, where there was holes filled and uh, an awful lot of sanding had to be done. Now, I think some of this is going to come out really bright and some of it is not going to come out really bright. So remember and do your little triangles if you want to move it along. And just, that's how it looks. Then I join up my little triangles again. Just so that I know that's the that's how you you kind of know where you're going with your stencil. So just your little. Now I don't want all of this. I'll probably just go to this this one here because I'm going to blend into it. So I'm just going to join this one up with this one. And come down here like this, and then I'll show you how I'm just going to kind of blend it away so it's not like one square because that doesn't never looks very nice. So you don't need to be too careful with this outside edge and how you put it on right now because you're going to blend out. There we go. And I'm not even being too, you know, perfect. Bothered. Um, yeah, because I'll blend this side in. And I'm thinking I will probably go here and do, do here. Just do a little bit more. Make it more of a square. Triangles here and there, just so that I can do just this part here. So this, you don't need to worry about the edges. Yeah, and oh, I didn't get my triangle there. Hang on. I did. It's just where are we at now? Dip in the gold. And so once I've done this and I do show you how to blend it in, really I'm going to go away and let this side here dry and this side here is the same on all of the rest of the sides. So here we have it and so I'm probably going to pick the Abusson Blue to, to blend it away with just so it just doesn't look and if you think you're moving in another part of a different colour, just add that too. And just blend it out. It just stops it looking very square, like you've made a square. And that's all. That's all you do here. You're just fluffing up the edges a wee bit.
And I think that has detracted from some of the boobies on this side. I want to add a little bit more. Which ones here, some of this boy. Kind of feather that around. So that's how the sides are going to look. This band up here, which I'll show you at the front, is going to end up being gold. But these are my sides. And I'm just going to get on and do the rest of all my other sides and then when the fronts are dry we'll put on the we'll put on the transfer okay so i've got some black here and a tiny little artist brush and all i'm doing is i'm just running it down in here it's just to kind of like um just to give this frame a wee bit more of a frame really before i do anything else um i'm going to be painting the black tops on these cabinets on the top next because I want to have the, I want to make sure the piece is completely dry before I put any transfer near it if not it'll just lift all the paint and you'll just have ruined your your money and um, so always make sure that your piece is really really dry it doesn't matter if it goes a little bit out of the lines up here I'll show you what I did on the draw beside the Beside me as I did that. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep on dipping my water because I want it a bit more uh, oops, spoon. All I'm doing kind of finishing that off now. Anywhere where I think, oh hang on a minute, I've gone a wee bit all black. All I did oh well there you go, there's a part there. All I did is I, as I went back with my my big blending brush and just blended that away and made it a little bit darker around the edges like that just made it a feature so there we go now last but not least on the front before we put on our transfers is I've got this the brush this is the brush look at the state of it that um i'm gonna and then what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna rub it across here to bring out some of this detail i think it was a little bit drier when i did the other one um bring out the details there and maybe do a little bit of gold down some of the edges a little bit here and there nothing too much I'm not going crazy just bringing some gold in I'm really disappointed that that came out so I should have checked my brush before I dry brushed it but never mind them's the breaks I want to maybe do something like this um, along this and this is just dry brushing the gold on this little line here like that and I'll probably do the same on this one up here just so you know what I'm doing kind of next but before I do any more of this I'm showing you this really I need to get back to painting the tops all the sides on both are finished um, it's starting to really come together now and it's starting to look much more deco like the, the stencil the texture's fabulous now remember i still have to seal this whole piece it is not done until i seal it because this this paper hasn't been hasn't been properly sealed i'm just going to put a little bit of gold down there as i can right okay i'll set up for the top and i'll just show you what i'm doing on the top so i'm just going to paint the tops black now um, I'm painting the tops black with the um, the uh, all-in-one paint um, and I'm just going to make sure that I get in all this detail here and it's all covered up with the black. I might run the gold around there because it will bring back all that detail. But first of all, I'll give the tops two coats of this black. We're nearly done. We're so nearly finished, but not quite. So this the whole pieces have not been sealed yet, so now is the great time to put our transfers on. So... I don't want to use the white ones of this pack. I just want to stick with the blue, the, the blue, the turquoise, the this colour. So what I'm going to do is, because there's two big ones on each, I'm going to do the sort of chrysanthemum one on this side, this one on this side, and then swap them around. Put this bud down here and put this one down there. Okay, change of handle choice. The green ones were just too large for the piece. So I have these ones in a silver colour and I'm just... Painting them with um, gilding adhesive, gil sorry, gold gilding paste. Try again. So I'm just doing this and I'm going to let them dry. 
um, the piece has been sealed and the next time you see it, it will be staged. And we're done, brilliant, right? So what did we do? We had a dresser and we pulled it out of the skip because we saw the nice legs, but then there was no drawers in it. Somebody had obviously been looking at Pinterest and thought, mm, I'll take those drawers and make something like a footstool. Anyway, we had no drawers in our piece. So what did we do? Martin separated them to two, which led me to having to add a whole heap of texture onto this piece. It was dodgy to begin with, but it, it needed a lot more texture because obviously I had the sides that were drawn together to work with. We decoupaged the lovely um, Morag onto her, onto the piece. We have done Art Deco stenciling in gold. We've added gold to the top. We've added the Puma by Designs transfer uh we've tidied up the bottom it's had a new back insides have been painted a lovely um given all the new and fresh when you get something out of skip you must make sure that it's absolutely 100 percent a clean you've got rid of all bacteria and that you freshen it up inside and out it just has to go uh even if you're keeping it for yourself it has to be of a high standard but if it's going to a customer it has to be incredibly clean so that's just a little side side bar on that um Okay, so this was part of the Ugly Duckling Challenge. <laughs> I really struggled saying that, but it's been part of it. And um, the host is Corey from Desert DIY. Now, I said earlier, Desert Designs, I don't know why, I knew it was DIY. But anyway, it's Desert DIY. Look at the link below in the description box and you'll see a whole link to to her site, uh, her channel, and you'll see everybody else is taking part on on this challenge as well. There's furniture um, reimaginers like myself, furniture artists. There's furniture restorers. There's builders. There's everybody. There's a bit. It's, we all do different things. And um, if you like my channel, then go ahead and have a look at somebody else's. Um, if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. And um, for my who have already subscribed thank you very much for all my lovely comments that you always leave me um, give this video a thumbs up and um, push the bell notification button so that you're notified when i release a new video um don't forget to leave me a comment and possibly share it if you have a nice friend and you want to help her channel you think i've got a really nice friend i'm going to see Mm, nice friend would you like to see these people who do furniture share it because if all my 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 followers decided to share it to a nice friend. I'd have two thousand followers. That'd be great. Anyway, that's just a little tip there. Um, if you are new, I normally do ramble on like this at the end. It, yeah, anything really. So I've been Leo from Made by Marley, and obviously the lovely Martin is behind the camera. He is the the man that makes all these things happen. And that's really it for this week. And I'll see you again another day. Bye bye.